Welcome, this is The Baby Show. 30 minutes where you call the shots. It's your show, your content, our purpose, we take to the road and bring back answers. Here's what made the lineup. A self-styled soccer coach peddled a big dream to Pretoria parents and youngsters. No, hey, 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 don't put no, Spain I'm, on I'm, me. No, no, I'm not Spain is on you, bro. No, I'm not putting anything on you, but I'm saying that... So whose heart am I breaking here? No, you're not breaking anybody. I'm not breaking your son's heart, you're breaking the kid's heart, yeah. because Spain may not be happening here. Many left established clubs, throwing their weight behind Alfred or Alfred. And that's when the fun and games began. Well, how much you paid to, for Spain? No, we didn't pay the three million. So you lied to me. How many lies, bro? I'm running out of fingers and toes. Most young South African boys dream of becoming soccer stars, playing for the best teams in the world, attracting fame and oodles of cash. So when Alfredo Alfred arrived on the scene talking a big game, parents and youngsters were understandably taken in. Many young boys around South Africa dream to become global football stars, playing for one of the big international teams, finding fame and fortune while pursuing their passion. The first step for most parents like Adila Chiponde is to find a club and a coach to get their sons on track. Spend the whole December, early January looking for a club to register him in. And then we were actually lucky when my husband, one of the clients, actually recommended the club in Pretoria. And that's how she got to meet Alfredo Alfred and his wife, Liesl, who ran Inter Pretoria Football Club. The lady did explain to us that it is a new club mm. and the joining fee is absolutely free. There is only one payment that is needed, which is a 2.5 for the kids. Riyad Hafaji says his son, Aman, has loved soccer for as long as he can remember. So my son is an avid footballer and at the age of five he played soccer in, in Saudi Arabia where we lived and uh, the passion just grew from there. Once they were back in the country, he took it even more seriously and played for a reputable club where Alfredo's son was also a member. He approached me to say that he was thinking of starting a new football club and he would like to scout my son to play for his, for his football team. For any budding footballer, you want to be scouted and you want to play, so that's, that's great. Alfredo seemed to have all the credentials to run a successful club. Things that ran from the fact that he has a qualification in coaching together with a psychology to coaching that he's, he's achieved, the fact that he was a professional footballer and played for local clubs, but that his passion was always uh, development of football. He sold us a dream in terms of development. Grant Waterston's son, Matthew, also shared his passion from an early age. His dream is to maybe play for an international team, maybe preferably in the Premier League or something like that. His heroes are like Messi and Ronaldo and those guys. Matthew had been playing for a club at school before joining Inter Pretoria FC. One of the coaches that used to coach Matthew at high school asked him to come and join the club. Alfredo was full of promises at the meetings with parents in February this year. Saying that he does have an investor. Once the money is cleared, Alfredo was to renovate the grounds for us, build a clubhouse for us. Tyrone Gunny bought into the vision and the camaraderie for his son. If you wanted to see an example of what a functioning community in the South African sense could look like, all you needed to do was be there on a Saturday. Uh, beyond camaraderie, uh, just a sense of unity in purpose. The club grew quickly to over 100 players and Alfredo promised a very professional looking soccer kit. Uh, we got beautiful images on the WhatsApp of what the kit was going to look like, different kits for each age group. So it was very impressive and it looked really good. And despite paying, none of them received the kit months later. We found Alfredo on the pitch ahead of a tournament. I've got a couple of complaints that have been laid by parents against you. They've come to the Devi show, so I thought here's an opportunity for your right to reply. Okay. The first one is around the issue of a soccer kit. Apparently they paid 2,500 Rand, but they haven't received the soccer kit. No, but they will receive the kit. Yeah, but they, they paid it a long time ago, so what happened? 
No, there was a problem with the, with the logo on the kit. Yeah. So we had to reprint it. We'd also heard from parents that he was going around taking loans from many of them. The initial loan I had given him was at his son's uh, birthday party early, or late January. We were invited. We had a nice time. We left the party. I got home and about an hour later he, he calls me to say he's got a problem. His credit card is not working. I drove from here back to the venue. I paid with my credit card. It was an amount in excess of about 4,200 rands. In March, this guy phoned my husband borrowing 4,000 to buy sports equipment in Rustenburg. But then I said to the parent, we gave it because we were waiting for the investors' monies to clear. It made sense. Hmm. But then this parent, they said, no, but I gave the money for Rustenburg. What do you mean you gave money for Rustenburg? He asked again after that on a, on, on a weekend, on a Sunday morning, he sent me a message. Please, could you help me? My kids have no food. Things are really tight. The money hasn't cleared. He asked for 1,200 rands, which I then transferred into his, into his account. And to prove he had the money to honor the loans, Alfredo provided a letter, allegedly, from Standard Bank. That letter was the first red flag for Tyrone. If I was confirming that you had a bank account with Standard Bank, there would be no need for me to state what amount of money you have in your bank account and how much you have drawn as collateral. How many did he borrow money from and how much? We're sitting with over 100K. No! being owed. Uh, we're sitting with uh, staff members that have never been paid, ever. We've sitting with some that have only received two to three payments. Some From the of beginning them. of the year? Correct. And when we challenged Alfredo, we discovered he owed parents double that. I'm hearing that you're also taking loans from parents. I owe some of the parents to help us, yes. Why? With, with the club. No, yeah. no, for this, for that, for that, yeah. for that, for everything. And you ask that one, then you ask. Yeah. Have you paid all the money back? No, not yet. How much? 100,000, 200,000, 300,000? It's almost 400,000. He promised to pay the money. Nothing has ever come from it. Every day there's excuses. This despite Alfredo living in a leafy Pretoria suburb. They live in a very, very expensive neighborhood in Pretoria with all the diplomats and ambassadors. Where do they live in Vatico? That's correct. Ah. Vice Chairman of the Pretoria Football Association, Neil Jones, says there was nothing untowards when Alfredo put forward his pitch to join the association. It was magnificent. Um, he had a vision, a mission. Um, um, our main concern is if they got players and if they got uh, facilities, which he ticked both boxes. And despite being an avid soccer fan himself, he had no recollection of Alfredo having played internationally. Never heard of him. And I watch a lot of football and I've never heard of him. We broached this with Alfredo. Did you really play overseas? Yeah. Which clubs? Because you know I'm going to check. I know you're going to check. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which, which... You're laughing. You think this is funny. Not funny. So not funny. Which club? Bordeaux. As what? The goalkeeper. And what year was that? 1997, 98, 99. Okay, and then what happened? I wasn't good enough. So we called Diego Lopez, head scout for Bordeaux. He's telling people that he paid for Bordeaux as a result of that... <laughs> you laughing because? No, I'm laughing because you're thinking that he's lying. Yes, yes, I do think he's lying. Alfredo, Alfred, where, and, and where is he based? He's based in... Is he Spanish? No, he's South African. He double-checked for us and confirmed Alfredo had never played for the French team. Coming up, the death of a young player. What happened with that child from New Hope School, the one who died? Don't bring it up. I have to bring it up. It wasn't under my watch. I was the coach that morning and yeah. I can't I can't say what happened. Welcome back. You're watching the Davy Show. Before the break, part one of our story on Alfredo Alfred a Pretoria soccer coach who claimed to have connections and clout. In part two, parents become suspicious when a lot of what Alfredo says simply does not add up. Another dream for many young soccer enthusiasts is to get the opportunity to play overseas, to visit a big football-loving nation like Spain. Alfredo zoned in on this and started making big promises to his players and parents. Spain is a trip 
uh, was pitched as a third idea, second or third idea. Initially, he had written to us earlier in the year saying that Newcastle United was willing to host us at the end of 2023, and they would host us for two weeks. We'd have games with them, we'd have training sessions with them, and he was working on that. There was also an opportunity to go to Inter Miami in the US, as well as he spoke about uh, Leeds United uh, in, in the English Premier League. The plan was that the guys were going to go over to Spain uh, for a two-week trip and um, stay with uh, the La Liga training school there um, and be trained by La Liga coaches. So it's, it sounded incredible. And that's how the parents were introduced to Spanish soccer agent Daniel Infante. He's a scout. Remember, he, he, was, he thought he's got a signed deal for December. There's no need for him to go and sky, scout around anymore in, in, in Gauteng. And he went back. All he's waiting for now is this payment that he never received in order to book, make our booking. This despite Alfredo expressly telling parents he'd already paid a substantial amount of money towards the trip in early August. He called a couple of parents and he did say he's very disappointed on the way our kids are performing. And what uh, worries him more is that he's already paid three million um, towards the Spain tour. But in recent weeks, parents discovered after making contact with Daniel Infanta in Spain that the trip was off due to non-payment, as this correspondence clearly shows. He did give Alfredo a letter terminating his relationship with Alfredo because he's also discovered and learned of the fraudulent Standard Bank, so there is no deposit coming through. I believe some of these boys, if not all, would be traumatized by this because they were sold a dream. They, they worked towards this. Pipe dream. None of it happened. We asked Alfredo about this too. Are they, are they going or not going or, or what? Yeah, we've got a meeting with the parents next week. But aren't they leaving now in December? Yeah. They're supposed to leave in December. So when are they leaving in December? The 8th of December. You got the tickets and things? No, how can they have tickets if the boys are still doing their passports? As per Daniel's letter, there is no Spain. And he's made uh, um, Alfredo aware of this. And to date, none of the parents know. So he's just keeping quiet? He's just keeping quiet. Can you allow me to, to continue with it? I'm not living in a illusion or in denial or anything like that. Can you allow me because my continue son is Continue with what? My son is part of this. Yeah, no. It means I'm going to break these orders while it was not happening. No, hey, 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 don't put no, Spain I'm, on me. No, no, I'm not Spain is on you, bro. No, I'm not putting anything on you, but I'm saying that... So whose heart am I breaking here? No, you're not breaking anybody. I'm not breaking your son's heart, you're breaking the kid's heart. Yeah. Because Spain may not be happening here. And yeah, it may also have. Yeah, but what's the chance of it happening? Be honest Spain, now. No, 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 like, I'm going to tell you honestly now, you know, it's fairly, fairly good. While Alfredo was happy to rake in money, he was slow to pay for anything, it seems. He still owed prize money for a tournament he'd hosted in August. What happened with the, the prizes for the last uh, tournament? What do you mean what happened with the prizes? Did you give them the prizes? Yeah. Was it cash money that we you know, we transferred the money. You transferred yeah. the money because they don't have it yet. Th that's what they've said to us, no, right? We paid them. We've even seen messages from coaches who claim they haven't been paid for months. This while Alfredo was going around playing the role of philanthropist. He did say it in the parents' group that he would like to do something for the community and he's decided to adopt that school called New Hope and keep the kids active and train them how to play soccer. And he's going to do this at the soccer fields. During one of these practice sessions, a young goalkeeper, Brian Gobeni, sustained a fatal injury after a kick to the head. CPR was done by Alfredo. However, that boy passed on in hospital. From what I understand, there was no uh, emergency medical teams that were, that were there at the time of the incident. I can't confirm, but that he was not a qualified first aid responder. We believe there is currently an inquest into Brian's death. Have you attended any first aid courses? Do you have any qualifications in first aid? No, I just have my first aid certificate. What happened with that child from New Hope School, the one who died? Don't bring it up. I have to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Parents lost their child and it was under your watch. That's why I'm asking you what happened no, there. A, we were helping New Hope, but it wasn't under my watch. I was the coach that morning and yeah. I can't, I can't um, I'm, I'm say what happened because we spoke to the, the family of the... But the, the child family. died yes. and you attempted CPR from what I understand. Nope. You never no, attempted no, no, CPR? No, we, we laid the boy down. I yeah. told the teachers, you can also yeah. teachers as well. Coming up, parents 
demand answers. Well, how much you paid to, for Spain? No, we didn't pay the three lorries. So you lied to me. How many lies, bro? I'm running out of fingers and toes. Welcome back. You're watching The Davy Show. And on this edition, we're concentrating on one man, Pretoria coach Alfredo Alfred. In the final part, more of Alfredo's dark and murky past comes back to haunt him. With so many glaring red flags and so many question marks, Adila decided to do some digging into Alfredo's background and came across an article from IOL that dates back to August 2017 when Alfredo ran a reality modeling show called Beard Squin. We tracked down one of the models, Sasha Fredericks, who says the production was mired in drama and the winner never got her prize. They gave her the keys of the Jeep on the night, but then they took it back again. Alfredo allegedly told them he was producing the show for the SABC. He even hired a production team, but it all went south. Did you know if the production team were paid? They did not get paid. They, that's why he ended up filming and taking photos eventually after like the photographer was pulled out as well. So he was in the end shooting a reality show and he was the cameraman too? Yeah. Six years ago, I had a TV program and something similar happened. And I wasn't, that is probably why you guys are here today. Beard Squin? Yeah. What happened there? Staff members stabbed me in the back and, and spread lies about me. They say that me. you didn't pay them. No, we you did. also said that Heinz Winkler was going to write the soundtrack and he said absolutely no, he, not. No, he stepped out and then we got um, youngster to do it. Were you going to air away? SABC away? No, on um, Cape Town TV. We wrote to Cape Town TV and they replied, saying that no such program had ever aired on their channel. Fake proof of payments were also circulating around that time to staff members. Is it true? No. No? No. Never did that? In the same article was an allegation that Alfredo had taken money for a soccer tour whilst working as a coach at Heatfield College. They raised money, it was a lot of money for a soccer show. And then they ended up not going and he disappeared with the money. The kids were left at the airport allegedly? Nope. I came home with them. What happened with the money? They got the money back. From you? No, from the scheme. I never had the money. But, but what does it have to do with you then? How are you involved? Because I was in charge of it because they said that I didn't organize it properly. Is that true that yeah. you didn't organize it properly? I think it is. Yeah, that was my first. Then you've got Built School in the television program. That had another issue. Son, I'm saying, I don't know what you think, but I think you need to be straight with these players oh. here. When, when are you going to do that? I asked him whether we can meet after the storm. But despite telling us he wanted to meet with him, Alfredo attempted to leave the field a few minutes later, but the parents were a few steps ahead and blocked the exit. I threatened my nephew on a WhatsApp. An adult doing this to, to youngsters. Alfredo, get off the car and talk to them. They're not going to hurt you. No, but no one is going to hurt you. Nobody's going to hurt you. We just, we just want, want answers. answers. He sheepishly alighted and joined them under the trees. The parents handed him a letter detailing their concerns. Your behavior and your lies is appalling. Please find it as a serious matter because we will pursue. Emotions were running high. And is this fine trip happening? Daniel and I had a fallout two weeks ago about the trip it was of the, the puns that we must all take. And I asked him to give us another another week. And I told him this, that we will give the one from. How about you paid to, for Spain? No, we didn't pay the three million. Riyadh was incensed. So you lied to me. How many lies, bro? I'm running out of fingers and toes. To give the parents the impression that he could honor the loans and make the Spain trip a reality, Alfredo gave them a letter he claimed was from Standard Bank, which confirmed that he had 34 million rands at his disposal. Is that true, that letter? Because you know if I go to Standard Bank and they tell me that's fake, you go to jail. I know I will go to jail. You're not acting like someone who's got 34 million. You, you, these kids would be gone to going to Spain, tickets and everything by now. So I don't think you have this 34 million, to be honest with you. It was not my money. Whose money? The club's money. You've got 34 million in the club's account. 
Then, one of Alfredo's latest fundraising efforts was a winner car competition with a VW T-Cross from a Soweto dealership as the prize. The IOL article from 2017 also mentioned a car competition with a Mini Cooper up for grabs. Cora Marie Solomons is said to have won the prize, which she never got. And no. then you never told her that when you were about to deliver the Mini Cooper, you got hijacked? No. The car got hijacked with no. the papers in it? No, no, Cora. Lots of people making up lies about no, you, I, then I, if I that's the you. case, Alfredo, am I right? Yeah. It turned out that he was also being very loose with the truth when it came to his latest car competition. We called the dealership and discovered that he had never donated the car as Alfredo had claimed to parents. Did you agree to sponsor yes. a car? He was going to purchase the vehicle from us which was going to be worn in the competition. So they weren't sponsoring a car, you were going to buy the car? Yeah. So when were you going to say that? No, we, no, they can't sponsor the car. What we discussed in the meeting was this. People will think that the car is sponsored because that will um, give mileage to VW as well. You were going to buy the car? Yeah. With what bucks? With what bucks are you going to buy this car? With fresh air? The most immediate problem for the parents, though, is getting clearance to leave into Pretoria FC so that they can join a new club. I'm putting it in the association's corner now. Please help us to expedite this so that we can take our children to other clubs, whether we are at liberty to form a new club, but you do your share because we have been conned and our children have been conned. And we are requesting release status for our children immediately. Are you going to give them the details, yes. the clearances? Eh? Okay, all right. You want to say last, any last words, Alfredo? I'm sorry. The tournament never continued as scheduled the following day and the field was deserted. Alfredo, in the meantime, seems to have disappeared. Neil has now stepped in to help. Uh, uh, executive meeting where we've accepted the letter and the process now will go forward to deregister the kids and let them go wherever they like. The parents' only hope now is that by speaking out, they will be able to save other parents and players from similar heartbreak in the future. My biggest fear is if this goes on, even if he does not go and open this at another in another province, what's next? It started with models, it's now a soccer club. My son, like I say, has been distraught, uh, he's, he's shattered, but he will pick up the pieces. He's, he's vowed to continue to play football. He's not going to let one person shatter his dream. And that's it from us. Remember, this is your show, so tip us off with story ideas via devi at etv.co.za or tag us using hashtag devi on social media. From me and the Davy team, until next time, heads up South Africa, let's keep our eyes fixed on the horizon. We've got this.